is a, 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 a subscriber friend who was asking me about uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses so that I can speak about the same. Uh, so today I'll be teaching you about exactly who are the Jehovah's Witnesses and uh, what are their beliefs or uh, what do they believe so that if you understand very well you'll be able to know the truth and the truth will set you free that's what the bible tells us now this sect let me call it a sect because uh, they are not christians now this sect which is known today is the jehovah's witnesses started out um in Pe pennsylvania in the u.s around um, 1870 it uh, started as a bible class led by some guy called uh, charles taze okay if you've heard about charles taze russell this is the guy and uh russell named his group the millennial dawn study he named it the millennial dawn study and uh, those who followed him were called the bible students and uh charles russell started writing uh, a series of books which he called the millennial dawn these uh, books and uh, these books stretched to around uh, six volumes before the time of his death and uh, they contained much of the theology of uh, jehovah's witness which we call today um, the Watchtower Bible and Track Society. Okay. All right. Now, group members, they were sometimes despairingly called the Russellites from the name of that guy, Russell. And after Russell's death in 1916, I think it's 1916, around there, uh, uh, some guy called uh, Judge J.F. Ruthfold, okay, this guy called Judge J.F. Ruthfold, Rutherfold, that's, that's the name, Rutherfold, uh, who was, became the Russell's successor, and uh, he wrote the seventh and the final volume of the Millennial Dawn series, which is called the Finished mystery in uh, around 1917 and uh, that was also the year that the organization spilled uh, or i mean split now for those who followed uh rutherford this uh, uh, uh no th this other guy here rutherford for those who followed him those who followed uh, this guy called Rutherford, they began calling themselves the Jehovah's Witnesses. Okay, the Jehovah's Witnesses. So now, before we begin, we have to understand what do the Jehovah's Witnesses believe? What do they believe? Now, I have a few uh, writings here, which is just doing some research and so on. And uh, I saw several things here which I'm going to address. Now, when you have a close scrutiny of the doctrinal position on such subjects as the deity of Christ, salvation, the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, and the atonement, it shows beyond a, a doubt that they do not hold to the orthodox Christian positions on these subjects. The Jehovah's Witnesses, they don't hold the normal Christian positions on those subjects. Jehovah's Witnesses believe that uh, Jesus is the <laughs> Jesus is the Archangel Michael. You know, that's that's one of the things they believe. And uh, that he was a created being, being the highest. Now, this one contradicts many scriptures which clearly declare that Jesus is is God. Let me just show you. Like in John 1 1 says, in the beginning was the word. Word you can see is in capital letters meaning Jesus. And the word was with God. You see Jesus was with God. And the word 
was God. You see, Jesus is God. Because the same verse in 14, it's saying, the same book, it's saying, and the word was made flesh. So Jesus came in flesh, who is God, and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The only begotten, what does begotten mean? Begotten means the same of the same kind, of the same kind with the Father. Having the same traits, you know, the same traits. The traits which the Father has, also Jesus has. So it means if the Father was there in the beginning, then Jesus was there in the beginning. If the Father does not die, Jesus not, does not die. If the Father does not sin, he does not also sin. Because we are not begotten. We are adopted children of the Father. But Jesus is the only begotten, meaning he is the only of the same kind of the Father. So they are one. Are you seeing the point here? And also, uh, John... Let me show you also, it explains to you easily to understand how these guys, they've been faking it and seeming as if they're, they're Christians, but they're not. Look at uh, this verse in John 8, 58. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. So if before Abraham, Jesus was there, then it means Jesus must have the character of God. He must be God because Abraham, we know Jesus came later on and he was born in the lineage of Abraham. So it means if he was there before even his father, then he is God. Have you seen the point here? And also, uh, when you check also John uh, 10 verses uh, 30, John 10 30, it also tells us about the deity of Jesus. He says, I and my father are one. So if him and his father, they are one, and also remember the Bible tells us that Jesus is the image of the unseen God. Is the image of the invisible God. So it means him and his father, they are one. So Jesus also is God. Are you seeing the point here? So when the Jehovah's Witnesses, they refute, okay? They refute and they say that uh, Jesus is just a created archangel. Then they are lying. And we see also so many other things. They reject the doctrine of the Trinity. They reject the deity of Christ and affirm the early heretic Arias uh, the, as the Christian leader and place him in their line of uh, teachers. They reject the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ. They don't agree that Jesus was here in the body and that he resurrected in the body. They reject the personality of the Holy Spirit. He is just viewed like a force. They say the Holy Spirit is just a force or an activating power. But you know the Bible says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Those, that means he has a heart, he has a mind, and he has a will. So if uh, they are saying is a force, a force does not have feelings. A force does not grieve. Okay? And also they try to say that the Holy Spirit is not an individual member of the Trinity. And they reject the idea of eternal punishment. They say uh, the, there, is no, uh, there is no hell. So if they reject hell, there is no eternal punishment, then th this is a cult, okay? This is a cult and you need to get away from it if you're there. And also, we have to understand something else, that uh, Jehovah's Witnesses believe salvation is obtained by a combination, a combination of faith and uh, good works and obedience. You have to have faith and then works and obedience. I don't know what they really mean by obedience, but it's like obeying those doctrines that they put in. And that's the only way you can be saved. And this one, we know it contradicts countless scriptures, which declare salvation to be received by grace through faith only. Okay? Because the Bible tells us there's nothing that you need to do to be saved. John uh, 3 verse 16. You know what the Bible says? It's all about believing. There's nothing else. You don't need to do good works to be saved. Good works only come later on as a point of rewards, but not as a point of you getting saved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him, not believes in him and does some works, believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So it's not believing and doing some something. And also we know in Ephesians, 
uh, 2 verses uh, 8 to 9, it also tells us the same concerning this. It says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works. You see, the Bible is refuting works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship created. After we are being created in Jesus Christ, what are we supposed to do? Unto good works. After we are created, we are supposed to do good works, which God has, uh, has before ordained that we should walk in them. But then we are not saved by the works. Only works are, a, are to help us get rewards in heaven after we are saved. So salvation is not of works, lest any man should boast. Okay, And also the book of Titus, Titus tells us, Titus 3 verses 5, it tells us, that uh, not by works of righteousness we have uh, which we have done but according to his mercy he saved us so you see it's not by works of righteousness that you have been saved but is according to his mercy and by the washing of the regeneration and renewing of the holy ghost are you seeing the point here so jehovah's witnesses they try to say is faith plus works and this is not true and they reject the trinity they reject completely the Trinity. They, they don't believe a Trinity exists because they say uh, they believe that Jesus was created, was a created being. Okay? And the Holy Spirit uh, was just there to animate the power of God. You, you see? They say the Holy Spirit is just a force. And there is only God the Father alone. Uh, you see, the, all those are heresies. And uh, Jehovah's Witnesses they they try to do this so that they can lure themselves into their uh, people into their cult okay so jehovah's witnesses they reject the concept of christ's substitutionary atonement okay there's something called the christ substitutionary atonement uh, which they reject and they hold a ransom theory that jesus death was just a ransom payment for adam's sin adam only you see there's something called substitutionary uh, atonement. Now, let me give you a picture here, okay? Now, let's assume this is Jesus. This is uh, Jesus between two thieves, okay? Now, we understand that one thief uh, was forgiven by Jesus and was told that he'll be with him in heaven that, that, that day after they die. And uh, the other one was not. Now, how comes this thief was able to be told that he will have life? It's because this thief who was guilty, deserving of death, substituted his death by giving Jesus the death, his death, because Jesus was righteous and he deserved life. And Jesus gave him life and this one gave him his death. So Jesus died on the behalf of this thief. So this thief, he lived on the behalf of the life that Jesus had. That is what we call substitutionary atonement. So if Jesus was a sinner he could not have saved this guy are you seeing the point but jesus because he was innocent that's why he gave this person life this thief out here the other thief could not save the other thief because both of them are guilty they deserve to die but jesus did not deserve to die he deserved to live so instead of jesus living he said let me die and this person lives are you seeing the point so that's that's what we call substitutionary atonement and that's what the Jehovah's Witnesses, they really, really uh, refute. So now, we may ask ourselves, how do the Jehovah's Witnesses justify these unbiblical doctrines? How do they justify? First, they claim that the church has corrupted the Bible over the centuries. That's, that's what they say. They say that the Bible is corrupt in some point. Uh, therefore, they have retranslated the Bible into what they call the New World, uh, World Translation Bible. The New World Translation, uh, Holy Scriptures and all that. That's, that's what they say. And uh, the Watchtower Bible and the Tract Society has been able to alter the text of the Bible to make it fit for their false doctrine rather than basing the doctrine on what the Bible actually teaches. Okay, what the Bible actually teaches. And the New World Translation has gone through numerous editions as Jehovah's Witnesses discover more and more scriptures that contradict their doctrines. So they're trying to change the Bible. And what does the Bible say? 
about itself in revelation 22 verse 18 it says i want everyone who hears the word of the prophecy of this book the bible if anyone adds anything to them god will add to him the plagues described in this book or if anyone removes anything the same will also happen so the bible is very clear don't add or remove and that's the same sin which was being done by uh, satan questioning the bible in the garden of eden when satan was asking eve are you sure that god told you that uh, when you eat of that fruit you will die are you sure you will die was God really serious when he said this? Or was it just a conspiracy or something? You know, questioning. When you start questioning the Holy Scriptures, that's where now your all heresy comes in. You understand the point? So it's very important for us to avoid questioning the Bible because the Bible is a true word of God. So the Watchtower bases its beliefs. It bases its beliefs and doctrines on the original and expanded teachings of Charles Russell. They try to say this is the guy who was so, so good, so perfect. He said it the way it was supposed to be. And also the other guy, Judge, um, Judge Joseph Franklin, uh, Franklin Rutherford, okay? J.F. Rutherford and their successors. And the governing body of the Watchtower Bible Tract Society, okay? The, the, the whole, this Watchtower team. So they say these are the good guys and that they are the only body in the uh, uh, who, who who have the authority to interpret the scriptures that those guys and and uh, this watchtower society whatever they are the only ones who are who can change the bible this is just the same thing which is being taught by the catholics that uh, the pope has the power to change the bible and that uh, those priests they can change things but, and we know the Bible has told us that no one is supposed to change the Bible because they try to change so that they can put their doctrines there. All right? All right. Now, in other words, what the governing body, this one says, concerning any scriptural passage is viewed as the last word and independent thinking is strongly discouraged. This one is direct opposition to Paul's admonition. You remember? What Paul told us, yeah, what uh, he was telling Timothy, and also to us, that we are supposed to study to be approved. Let me show you 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. Paul was telling Timothy that him and his, his, his the people who are in his church, in the church where he's, uh, he's leading, they should study to show this, themselves approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So they should study to show themselves approved unto God, not unto man. You saw this, these people are trying to be approved unto men, to have themselves being approved by men, which is a clear, uh, a, a, a clear difference between what the Bible is telling us, that we should be approved by God, not man. Okay, so this one is a clear instruction. This one is a clear instruction from God to, to each of his children to be like the Berean Christians. You remember the Berean Christians in Acts 17, 11, if I'm not wrong, whereby these people, they searched the scriptures daily to see if the things that were being taught lined up with the word of God. I think this one is good, I show you. The book of Acts 17, verses 11 let me just check if I'm right on this. Yes, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were true. Okay, this is talking about the Bereans. The brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea. So this is talking about Berean Jews, Berean Christians. Okay. So they were more noble than those in Thessalonica because they searched the scriptures daily to see whatever Paul is saying or anyone is saying, is it true? So we are supposed to be like the church of Berean, the Berean Christians who are searching daily. We're not supposed to sit down and just have some watchtower fellas uh, dictate what the Bible says is right or is wrong or the, Christ, uh, the Catholics and things like that. So uh, th things, things like that. So... Enough said about that. We know that uh, there's probably no religious group that is more faithful 
than Jehovah's Witnesses at getting their message out. They try so much to get their message out there. Unfortunately, the message is full of distortions, deceptions, and false doctrines. And we pray that every day that God may open their eyes, okay, to return to the truth of the gospel and the true teaching of God's words. Because you may have a lot of passion to do the right thing, but you're doing it in the wrong way. Remember Apollos. Apollos had a lot of vigor to go and preach the word of God. And he was preaching and preaching, but he was preaching it wrongly. He was preaching salvation by baptism of uh, uh, the baptism of John. That is salvation. But yes, the passion was right, but he was wrong. Until um, uh, she, the, the, they were called who? Mm, was it Akaya or uh, I don't know this this lady and her, and and her and her husband? They they brought him to their house and they taught them exactly the gospel, which is all about what Jesus did for us. So you can have the passion. Even Paul himself, he had the passion to do the right thing, but he was doing it the wrong way before he got saved. Remember, Paul was a Pharisee. And he was telling people to keep the law. And he was even persecuting those who don't keep the law. But that was wrong until Jesus appeared to him on his way to Damascus and told him, no, that's, that's not the right thing. You're persecuting me. You're doing, you have the right passion, but the wrong message. So he taught him the right message. And, and we know what happened with Paul. He's been able to preach the whole world. So guys, when you meet these Jehovah's Witnesses, just tell them the truth and tell them that... Uh, he, they, they, they just need to adjust themselves and understand the truth because the truth is found in the gospel and uh, most of them they don't know the gospel and that's why I always try to tell uh, to explain the gospel in all my videos because there might be someone there who is watching it for the first time and has never heard the gospel Okay, so it's very important to tell what the gospel is so the gospel means good news the gospel means good news so if there is a good news, then it means there must have been bad news. So what was the bad news? The Bible tells us that we are sinners. We are sinners from Adam. When Adam ate from the forbidden fruit, he fell. He died. And uh, yes, he did not die physically there and there, but his spirit died. He was separated from God. Death is basically separation from God. And uh, when Adam and Eve they continued, they had children. All the children that they bore were in their image. So unless you're saved, you're not in the image of God. You're in the image of Adam. Just go and read uh, uh, Genesis 5, uh, verse 3. It says that you're in the image of Adam. Adam uh, uh, bore a child, Seth, in his own image and his own likeness. So it was not in the likeness of God because God is holy. And he created Adam holy, but... Adam fell. So all his children are in the image of Adam. So now what really happened is that uh, all through the years we have had that fallen image. So we are dead, spiritually dead. And that's why things have been so rough. And that's why we're always against God. That is the bad news. So what is the good news? The good news is while we were still sinners 2,000 years ago, Christ died for us so that you can have his life. You see, through one man, Everyone fell. Through Adam, we fell. But through one man who is called Jesus, we have life. So Jesus came to bring us life. The Bible tells us that the Son of Man did not come to condemn the world, but through him, everyone might be saved. So Jesus gave us his life so that we might be saved. And that's where the gospel applies. And that's the power of the gospel. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. The good news. It's all about how that Christ died for our sins. He was buried. He was rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Imagine Jesus already died for your sins. He already did it. There's nothing else which is need to be done. All that you need to do is just believe that he died for you. When you believe, you accept that payment of sin by faith. Imagine there's nothing else you need to do. You don't even need to keep on looking and telling Jesus, oh, Jesus, now forgive me. No, you're just telling Jesus, I believe you died for me. You died for my sins. You were buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. You only confess what you have understood because confession is from what you have understood. That's why the sinner's prayer cannot say because sinner's prayer is just repeating something for salvation. But we don't do anything for salvation. We just believe and we confess what we have believed. That is what we call salvation. That's what the good news is. 
that Jesus did it for us. So, my friends, if, if you are Jehovah's Witness, if you know these people, just tell them the truth of the gospel, what really happened, and that why we need to believe in Jesus, okay? Hope this has been a blessing to you. Hope you have been able to understand something. And if you enjoyed these videos, please give them a like. And also you can subscribe to watch more videos and uh, hit the notification bell so that when you post a new video, you can be the first one to get it. Uh, and uh, likewise, uh, you can check uh, on our description. We have a couple of other channels outside of YouTube where you can go and check out. God bless you and have a good time. Share to your friends.